Hi, it's Professor Streeter again. And uh, before class tomorrow, I'm going to make a little video here talking about Gilgamesh and giving some of my thoughts in response to questions you've been raising on the feedback forum today, or yesterday and today. I'll try to do this on a regular basis, make short videos for you to watch before class or after class to help supplement what we're doing in class and hopefully to help you get more prepared for discussions in class. I think it'll make it easier to have discussions in class if you watch some of the videos I'm making that gives you some context for the questions I'm asking and the conversation I'm trying to have together as much as possible virtually. Okay, so to start, many of you in the Monday feedback forum have been asking questions like, what is fact? What is fiction? What is historical truth? What is the imagination of the poet? What is the world of the poem, the mythical world of the poem? How does it relate to the real world? Those are all really good questions. And many of you were stuck there and sort of puzzling over that. So I thought that was as good a place to start my remarks as any. The first thing to say about that question is it's a question you can raise about any poem or any piece of literature. And it's a question you can raise about many ancient religious texts as well, where the express purpose is not to record history or to give an historical account. Um, for example, Gilgamesh is a poem that is telling a story. That first and foremost, that's what the text is doing, right? It's a written story based on a long oral tradition. Now, the poem might express historical truths or contain historical records. It might express moral truths. Uh, it might even express religious truths of some kind, right? But that's the, 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 the aim of the poem is to tell a story, at least in this case, the, the aim of this poem is first and foremost to tell a story. Now, there are histor written historical documents, the purpose of which is to record history, to give an account of historical events. Um, but works of literature, poems, and even many religious texts, right, that's not their purpose. Again, they may contain historical truths, they may express historical truths, they may show you something about the historical reality in which they were written, but that's not what they're for, right? That's not their primary function or purpose as texts. Um, okay, so that's the first point. <clears throat> the second point about history and Gilgamesh is that there's a timeline at the front of your book. Uh, and I asked you to read that partly for this purpose. So you could have a sense of the, um, the, the, the history of this text and its relationship to historical events in ancient Mesopotamia. So the first entry in the timeline, circa 2600 BC, we have the first dynasty, the first Sumerian dynasty of Ur, it's an ancient city, and there are archeological records of that city and of the civilization that ruled there going back to 2600. And at that time, based on clay tablets that we have unearthed, there are records or references to a, a ruler named Bilgamus. Right? There is the name Bilgamus on some of these ancient tablets that have been unearthed. Um, and th there's an inscription uh, from other tablets that reference kings from that period. And so it may be, since the name Gilgamesh in the poem looks similar in the ancient language to the name Gilgamesh and other kings from that, you know, that were written on um, other tablets, it may be that this poem and this, the oral tradition of telling this story makes reference to this actual historical king. But we don't have any reason to think that the figure of Gilgamesh in the poem is um, an exact replica of the actual king. Right? He probably shares some qualities with some of the kings that ruled at that time. 
But Gilgamesh, the poem, is really our only evidence for what King Gilgamesh did. And it's more an invention of the poet than it is uh, an historical record. Again, it's a poem. It's a telling of a story of a kind of imagined king. The name making reference to a king that may once have ruled in this period and this place.